ask me all the time as lieutenant governor, why do you even bother passing these bills that, that says you have to have photo ID to vote, et cetera, when you know they're going to fail in the House? Well, in my opinion, that's a reason to pass them, to prove to people that it matters who governs it. And we've proven that in the state Senate side on these issues right here, on, on the immigration issues, to be reasonable, but at the same time uh, have some teeth in the law. Okay. Uh, life issues, obviously, very yeah. important to a lot of people. When do you believe life begins? At conception. I do, okay. no, no doubt about it. I, I don't know if you noticed what happened just this week, and well, that's last week, but a couple of weeks ago, when the sting operation out in Memphis, that the young, a lady went into a Planned Parenthood and uh, office and said she was 14 years old, had a, had, a, had a hidden camera in her pocketbook, and said she was 14 years old, and uh, she had been gotten pregnant by a 31-year-old boyfriend. And you can watch on camera, as, and you can still get on YouTube and watch this as a, as a Planned Parenthood employee try to, to tell this girl how she could get around the parental consent laws we have in the state of Tennessee. Go to certain judges, tell them you're 17, and they will not ask any questions. And also encourage this person to lie about how old her boyfriend was, because if you're that would have been statutory rape, and if it's more than 10 years older than the girl, it's a felony. And so you, we watched on camera as Planned Parenthood encouraged this girl to break not one but two laws that I helped pass. And so this week or we have, are introducing a bill in the legislature to defund any money from the state going to Planned Parenthood. They're, they're obviously irresponsible. They're, they'll obviously do anything to, to talk. It's abortion first with them. That's quite obvious with them. So I'm adamantly pro-life and have passed several pieces of legislation along that line and going to continue to do that. So you would support defunding Planned Parenthood? hundred percent. Even if they say, hey, this is going for something else besides We've abortion? We've tried that. Well, we've tried that. That's what they did last year. You know, this this money is not going for abortion. Well, that's easy to do, Stacey. Okay, we give, the state gives them $1.1 $1 million. Okay, this this $1.1 $1 million, this little stack, that's not being used for a fund abortion. But obviously, you can t that means that frees up $1.1 million, that you, million, million, that you can slide over to here. And after what I saw on that tape, I am 100% co-sponsoring the bill to get the, to take the state money away from that. Okay. I get passionate about that yeah. one. <laughs> well, you know, SDR 127 and the yeah. life issue, very important because of the uh, Planned Parenthood versus Sunquist mm -hmm. decision that came down from the Supreme Court. Exactly. Uh, which is a very pro-life issue. It more or less struck down a whole bunch of our pro-life laws. Did. It did. Uh, Informed consent, brought well, down a long list. Uh, obviously, with judges, there's a move on to popularly elect mm -hmm. instead of yes, no retention votes. Do you support the people being able to vote popularly elected uh, uh, Supreme Court justices? Not a yes/no vote, but Joe Smith is running against Ben Smith, you know, or right. whoever, you know. Do you support? Popularly electing Supreme Court justices. I, you know, I, I'll be honest. I've gone back and forth on this, but I, right now, if you've noticed, I am leading the charge to change the way we do this. It's been all over the newspapers the last week or two, and even being called the Ramsey Plan, because the way we do it right now is ad absolutely wrong. This will take me just a few minutes to explain this. It's kind of two separate issues. Issue number one: How does how do we appoint a vacancy if a Supreme Court justice or appellate court justice uh, resigns, retires, or removed from office under the current system? We have what's called Judicial Selection Commission, 17 attorneys, well, actually 15 out of 17, let's be accurate about it, 15 out of 17 attorneys sit on a panel. If you want to go, you have to apply to this panel a self-perpetuating board that decides who their next member is. I've, I've, I've had to point these, I know. And then they sent up a list of three to the governor, meet behind closed doors and do that. I am adamantly opposed to that. For, for 120 years, the governor got to pick whoever he wanted to to go on during a, during a vacancy. But when Winfield Dunn got elected back in 1971, they came up with this Judicial Selection Commission that says that, that 17 attorneys know better than the people of the state of Tennessee that elected the governor. I'm adamantly opposed to that. Now, that's the issue of how you fill an appointment. Now, what do you do from there? And I can say I've, I've struggled with this. I've prayed about this, and I've thought about this. Have things changed from 1870 to, 19, to, uh, to 2009? Do we really want... Supreme Court justices running in contested elections where you have to raise millions of dollars. And, and to be honest, who wins? I mean, I want conservative judges on the bench. Now, trial lawyers have proven, and I've tried to study this issue, that they'll fund these because it takes millions of dollars to run statewide elections. So, in my opinion, the ideal situation would be do away with the Judicial Selection Commission, hopefully elect a Republican governor next time, get some conservative judges in there, then, they, then, then we're going to put up a constitutional amendment because there's one thing I absolutely positively believe. 
that what we're doing right now is unconstitutional. Our Constitution says, quote, judges shall be elected by qualified voters of the state. They're not. Now, in 1973, uh, our state Supreme Court, in a decision that, in my opinion, they wrote the back page of the decision first and figured out how to fill it in to make it work, they, they have declared that, uh, that this retention ballot is, is, is constitutional. Man, if you can say that, Stacey, you can say anything's constitutional. Elected by the qualified voters of the state. How much plainer does it get? So what do we do? We put a constitutional amendment to the people. And that's what I'm, I'm promoting right now. I don't know how far we're going to get with this because of the House, to be honest. I can pass it in the Senate. And so we're, this is going to be the, the, the issue over the next few weeks in the legislature, in my opinion. So... We put a constitutional amendment up to the people and change a few things in that constitutional amendment. Number one, assuming that it doesn't pass, if it doesn't pass to allow the people to vote, and we stay at the retention ballot, we're going to take the, their, their terms from eight years back to four years because that way if a judge makes some crazy decision, you don't have to wait maybe seven years to vote them out of office. Instead of yes, no on the ballot, I prefer to have retain, reject. That tells people what they're really, really doing. Now, there's going to be some that's going to say, vote this constitutional amendment down that makes what we're doing constitutional. Therefore, we popularly elect judges. I can understand that side of it. I really can. But I've sat and studied about this and thought about this. This is what I've deliberated more than anything in the legislature this year. And I've come to the conclusion that we don't necessarily want Supreme Court justices running statewide and, and expensive contested elections because I think the conservatives lose on that. But to go with the constitutional amendment that I have that will cut their term back to four years and have retain and reject on a ballot. As I say, this is not something you can explain in two minutes. It's it, tough. It, it's it tough is tough. Issue. It's a tough, tough issue. It's a tough, tough issue. And, I, and I'm, I don't have a problem with people that say we need a popular elect judge. But I'm going to tell you, look at what you're doing. What's your goal? What, what's your goal? I mean, do you want to just do you, what you, do you want to get conservative judges elected or just the principle of the thing? Because you lose on the principle of the thing. But I do believe from the bottom of my heart, that, that we got elected, Stacy, you got elected, I got elected, held up your right hand, and I'm going to uphold the Constitution of the state of Tennessee, and I can in good conscience sit there and do this, knowing that in my opinion, it's unconstitutional. You can have a, a dozen attorneys walk in here and argue that it is simply because the Supreme Court said it was. And I get that side of it, but, it, but, the, but the Supreme Court didn't do it, by the way, as a special panel that they appointed that did it. But once again, this is an issue that I'm passionate about because this, you and I both know that that, that, that judges, you and I can pass any law we want to and, and be the best, what we think is the best law in the world and they go to a judge, they strike it down. So the, 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 the judicial branch is just as important as legislative and executive branch. Okay. A couple environmental issues. Okay. The bottle bill. Do you support a tax no, on it? No, I, I don't. I mean, that, 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 that's, uh, that's a feel-good kind of bill. And, 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 and I, I was chairman of environment when it came up several times. Keep in mind, if we pass this bill like it was introduced this year, if you go down and buy you a, a, a case of bottled water, it's going to add about a do almost $2 to that case of bottled water. We, we have seven states around us. It's just not going to work. I mean, we just need to have education and tell people not to litter, and it, it, it doesn't work. Okay, mountaintop mining. Some people say it creates jobs. Other people say it destroys the environment. It, it, it creates jobs because we, we are, it, mining is one of the most highly regulated industries that we have in the state of Tennessee, and, and they have to get these permits, and, and they said that, that this is, quote, mountaintop removal. Or, and, and, and that once again, it's hard to oppose things like that. The, the liberals seem to always win when, the, when they come up with phraseology. They end up getting printed in the paper. So I'm not in favor of the current bill in the legislature. Okay. Banning the living wage, what people call the living mm -hmm. wage, from cities being able to implement, say, mm -hmm. Memphis has to have a living wage for all employees, not just city employees, but people who work within the city. I carried that bill. Back in, not, in the, maybe 1999, early 2000s, it passed the state senate, failed in the House. I was the sponsor. The Paul Stanley's the sponsor this year. We passed it in the state senate again. That, that is a local preemption on living wage because it just doesn't work. And that's one of those, once again, one of those feel-good issues. Who doesn't want to pay a living wage? But dig down deep into these issues, and you'll see it just doesn't work. So I, not only did I sponsor it a few years ago and it passed the senate, failed in the House, I've already voted for it again this year. All right. Last 30 seconds. <laughs> Tell us what's your vision. What do you want to see done as governor? Well, obviously, if you look at the, of all, all the candidates that are running, I am by far, in my opinion, the most qualified. Uh, I've been in state government now for 17 years, know it inside and out. And I, I've been ranked by most, uh, by most business uh, magazines as the most pro-business state legislature. And we're in a recession right now. We have a slowdown. We're not going to tax our way out of it. We're not going to spend our way out of it. We have to grow our way out of it. So we need a, a pro-business 
governor that knows how to recruit industry, that's been a small businessman himself. And, and on the education issue, someone's not afraid to stand up to, to, to fight those that, that – that, that, that are want status quo. Well, thank you very okay. much. I hate to tell you, we're I out know, of time. It's all right, Stacey. I love doing stuff like this. You always run out of time. Sorry about that. Ron, thanks for coming thank in. You. Thank you.